The Vector Flood Fill tool is a great way to color in your line work, but can also be combined with pixel painting to get even more artistic results. Today we'll look at how to combine these two methods to color in your work. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we'll be using the Vector Flood Fill tool to see how we can color in line work like this example here. Now this video is part two of my Vector Flood Fill tutorial. The original video was getting a little long, so I decided to split it in half. If you want a basic introduction of how the Vector Flood Fill tool works, be sure to watch that first video. I'll put a link down in the description below. So before we get to actually coloring line work, let me show you a good example of how we can use pixel painting and vector shapes together. And this will be kind of the foundation of the line work coloring I'll show you next. So let's we'll start with the most simple digital painting example, shading a sphere. So I'm in the Affinity Designer persona. Let me draw a sphere. And what I'll do now is I'll go into the pixel persona. Now in this mode, what I'll do is I'll select a paintbrush and I'll just select something soft and round. So that looks good. Now let's pick a slightly darker color. And what I can do with my brush is I can click and drag over my shape here. And you'll see what it did is it created a new pixel layer within my ellipse here. So this is a little bit different than what I did in a previous video where I actually rasterized the ellipse. Here I still have my vector shape. And what I can do is I can paint in the pixel layer here. And I can keep adding in details. Maybe I want the other side to be a little bit lighter. Now if I drag this pixel layer out, you can see the colors actually going all over the place here. But when the pixel layer is clipped inside the ellipse, it's limited to just that shape. And this is a really good technique for controlling where we want our paint to go. And I can also toggle on and off here. Now one handy tool is the smudge tool here. So I like to select that and I'll make it bigger. And if you want to smooth things out, you can kind of click and drag. Maybe we want to add a little bit of a highlight over here. I'll smudge it a little bit. I'm using a mouse for this. Ideally, you should be using a stylus. That's the best way to do this, but I'm just using a mouse for demonstration purposes. Let's give it a little more of a highlight over here. I'll go back to the smudge tool, smudge it just a little bit. So once again, I have my shape here and I can toggle the pixel layer on and off. And with my lips, I can also add a stroke to it. So these are different things you can do with your vector shape. I can resize it, give it different dimensions. So this shows you how you can paint in a really controlled area. So let's say I want to do another ellipse next to it. Let's do that. So I'll draw another circle. Let's make this one red. I'll go back to my pixel persona here. And with this ellipse selected, let me select the brush again. Select the darker color. I guess the shadow would be on this side. And you can see that even though I'm dragging over both areas, it's only coloring in the red ellipse because that's the one I have selected here, the pixel layer for the red one. Maybe we could also create some type of ground layer below them. So let's create like a green ground here. Put it beneath them. Once again, I could do some painting here. Once again, everything is very isolated and controlled. So let's see how we could actually do this with more complicated art. Now a very common thing you might need to do is color in someone else's line work. So let me show you how you can use the vector flood fill tool to do that and also pixel painting. Now I've opened up Creative Fabrica here. It's a graphic design asset website and they have tons of different art you can use for your own purposes. I'll put a link down in the description if you wanna check it out. So a lot of times coloring books use line work. So let me search for coloring books here. And you can see there's tons of options, lots of animal stuff. Let me try to find something that looks interesting to me. I like this animals one. So it looks like there's tons of art here to experiment with. I'll download it and then let's see what we get. So I downloaded the file and unzipped it. If I look inside of it, what I see is that I have JPEGs and basically also PNGs. So looking at these PNGs, let's open one in Affinity Photo and let's see what we have here. So you can see it's transparent. It's pretty good, but still we want vectors because if we zoom in, we can see we have all these jagged edges here. So even though it's high quality, I would prefer a vector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Creative Fabrica's vectorizer tool. So they have this feature here where you can actually vectorize an image. Let me upload this image. I'll upload the PNG. There's a ton of them here, but it was this 142 one. So I uploaded it and it gave me the result. Let's download it and see what we get. So I downloaded it. Let me open it up in Affinity Designer now. And we can see here's our vector. Let me turn off transparency just so we can see the background better. Transparent background. So if we zoom in, it looks like it did a really good job. The edges are very nicely defined. Lots of nice smooth curves. I don't really see any jaggedness. So overall, I really like this. 
And actually with vectors, it's really easy to change things. For example, with the mouth here, I don't really like these little parts here on the end. I just want to make it end sharply like that. So I'll do the same thing on this side. I like this a little bit better. And I can save it as an Infinity Designer file. So over here we have all these curves. I'm just going to group them so they're easy. I'll just call it Deer Line Work. So now with that selected, let's use our Vector Flood Fill tool and see what we can actually do here. So I'll select the tool. And let's kind of look around and see what's possible. So I'll click on the Deer. Seems like the head is pretty good, well contained. Let me click on the body. Also seems pretty good. So I actually have pretty well-defined areas here. Let me click over here. Now here's something I don't quite like. I don't like how this part goes in like this. I can see inside is getting filled too. So let me undo that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in. I'm actually gonna drag this point inwards a little bit. So I'm gonna make it so this overlaps this here. Now if I go back out with my fill tool, it's actually just limited to that area. And actually I see something else I don't like. I don't like the way this breaks up here. Let me zoom in. Let's fix this part a little bit. I think that's a little more realistic now. So I'll go back to my fill tool and we have it looking like that. So we can see as I have my line work and then I created all these other areas with the vector flood fill tool. And what I can also do is with all these selected, I can select all these parts of the deer and I can do a Boolean add on them. So I can combine them into one shape. So let's do that. So I'll click Boolean add and let's combine them into one shape. And I can see it's all one part here. And I'll give that useful name like deer body. Let's see what else I can do here. So I see we have these trees here. Let's see if we can color them in. Now when I select the vector flood fill tool, when I hover over here, it's not giving me that icon. And the reason is because these are open curves. For example, I can fill in the middle part of the deer here because it's closed. Of course, that's not a great color. Let me undo it. But I can't click onto the trees over here. So I think one thing I'm going to do to close everything is to put a rectangle around my whole design. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool. And I'll give it a thick red stroke just so you can see what it's doing to begin with. So that's what it looks like. So let me kind of bound the edges of my design. Now, of course, when you actually, if you can actually use this, you're going to want to crop your image so you don't see this boundary part here. But this is pretty common when you're doing things for books. You kind of need some extra space on the edges that's just kind of dead space and for bleed and all that kind of thing. Okay, now let me make it black. I'll make it a little bit thinner. So if I zoom in, you can see now I have a contained area in here with the rectangle and the original cloud. So actually, I'll put that rectangle inside the line work here. So now we put this boundary in here. Let's go back to the vector tool. And if I select green, Yes, now it seems to be working better. Although we still have a break there. Why'd that break? Let's zoom in. I can see there's kind of a gap here. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my node tool. And I'm just gonna close this shape. Let's try it again. And yeah, now we seem to be closed. So that worked pretty well. Fill in these parts here. And I'll take all these green parts and I'll add them together. And I'll call it tree leaves. Now what about the trunks of the trees? Let's see what happens there. I have a feeling it's not gonna be that clean. Let's see. Yeah, it kinda of goes all over the place. There, like that. So once again, we can fix it. Zoom in. I'll select the node tool again. And I think if I drag this and close it, that should be good. Probably over here I wanna do the same thing. Let's move it in. Now the colors I'm putting in now are just kind of placeholders. We should easily be able to change them later on. I'm just kind of getting some uh, rough stuff in here, and then we can change it. Let's add these together. I'll call it tree trunks. Let me do the sky and clouds with you, and then I'll zoom past the rest and show you the final result. So let's look at these clouds here. I want to have a blue sky and white clouds, but I can see that's going to be a problem because our clouds are broken up here. Let's see if we can fix that. Just drag these things over. That will be good. Over here. Put these in like that. I think that separates it. Let's go for the sky. That's pretty good for the sky. Lots of little pieces, but I'll just add it all together. So again, let's look at the grass. Looks like the grass is pretty well isolated here. So I'll continue on this and then I'll show you the flat coloring result. Okay, so here is the result of the flat coloring and these are all just solid colors that I used with the vector flood fill tool. 
So I'll just give you a brief overview of what I did. I created a separate shape for the deer's body here. So this is with it and without it. I had the tree leaves up here. So there's that part. And I showed you the tree trunks were different also. Now with the grass, I separated it into green grass. And I did some flower petals here. And also flower stems, kind of a smaller detail, but I added them in. And I separated the parts of the deer a little bit. So down here, you have this part, you have the spots, and kind of the chest area. And if I turn off my line work, you can kind of see all the individual parts that I colored in. So I'll turn the lines back on. So this is our flat coloring here. Now what we can do is we can use the pixel persona to add in shading. And that's gonna work very similarly to what I showed you with the sphere example. So let me go to the pixel persona here. So what I'll do to start off with is I'll start by shading the deer's body. And remember, this is that shape here, so I'll turn it on and off. So now if I select a brush, I'll just do a soft round brush here. And what I'll do is I'll select the color from the deer, and I'll make it a little bit darker. So let's start with the side of the head here. So with the deer's body selected, I'll click and I'll drag. And you can see, like before, we got this pixel layer underneath the deer's body. So as I shade in, I'm just shading in the deer itself, not the ground behind it or anything else. I'll shade in his back leg here as if it's like in shadow or something like that. Maybe the part on his stomach is a little bit in shadow. I'll do the ear, side of the head a little bit. I'm still using mouse, by the way. Again, ideal tool would be some type of stylus, but mouse is possible. Actually, the mouse is working better than I thought it would. It's not as painful as I expected. If you find that the smudge tool isn't having much of an effect, you can change the flow here to make it stronger. But sometimes smudging is easier than painting. So this is before, after, before, after. Now those of you who are comfortable with blend modes, you can actually add this as a blend mode too. So right now I have it as normal. I can do multiply. Now you see it's even more strong. And of course I can change the opacity of it too to dial it down a bit. I kind of like that. So one thing I can do is add another pixel layer under my deer body here. So let me call this one shadow, the first one I created already. We'll make that the shadows. And let me add another one for the highlights. So I'll click add pixel layer. And I'll say highlights. So I called it highlights. And what I can do now is I can actually put some light on the other side of my deer. So maybe he's getting light on the right side here, our right. I still haven't really defined where the light source is coming from, but somewhere up above. Now for highlights, what you can do is you can set this to the screen mode. So I'll set this to screen. Probably should have done that to begin with. So again, it's very strong, so I can turn down the opacity. I could have started that way too and just used a darker color. So I'll turn them both on and off. So this is on and this is off. On, off. So let me also do the same thing with the grass here. So let's say I want to have the grass be different colors. Maybe in this case, I'll use a different brush. I want something with a little more texture. Let's try some of these dry media ones. Let's try this one. Yeah, kind of like that. So it's before, after. So my brush here was the uh, classic crayon blend. Maybe I'll add little bits of yellow. And then the background, the grass would look a little more desaturated to give it some type of uh, atmospheric perspective there. So let's do the tree trunks here. So it's very easy to just color along these edges and not even worry about going outside the lines because I've already defined my shapes here. I like all these different textures, they make it look more interesting. So with the ears, it's also possible to really easily control these areas. So I selected red, let's make it a little bit darker. So it's kind of a shadow up there. Shadow over here. Maybe it's kind of brighter on the bottom part. So I'll keep working on this and I'll show you the final result. So here's what I ended up doing for this artwork here. I did a little more work on the deer, so I'll turn this on and off so you can see this is originally what it was. And then I added in the shadows and highlights. I have some textures to the trees here just to make it look interesting. Kind of did a random grunge fill there. Added little bits of yellow and dark green and red. I did something similar with the clouds. Again, just to use the light grunge texture with a little bit of gray, just to make it so it's not straight white. And I did a little more work on the tree trunks over here also. I did some stuff with the flowers down here too, a little subtle shading. I did a shadow under the deer. So if I turn off my line work, you can see what all the painting I did is here. And the coolest thing about all of this is if I select all of it, it's all totally scalable. So you can see any size I want it to be, it will be. And the curves are still very smooth and sharp. Now you should know that your brushwork is going to have a resolution. So if I zoom in, you can see there's pixels for where I use the raster painting, but the line work is actually very sharp. 
So definitely when you're painting, you want to err on the side of painting in a higher resolution. So the vector fill tool makes it really easy to color your work and then touch it up later with raster tools. And again, if you want a link to create a Fabrica, I put it in the description down below. You can get line work there and also use their vectorizer tool, which works pretty well with black and white graphics. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.